Hello everyone and welcome to Lost in Translation Mon episode 11. This week we watched The Earthquake of Metal Greymon. Also known as The Evolution to Perfect Metal Greymon. And Home Away from Home. Or Koromon, The Great Clash in Tokyo. So we have some anonymous asks and some interesting sort of questions or statements from the With the Will forum. So Jay, do you want to read them out? Sure. So the first one is from Anonymous and Tumblr. Uh, they say, now that you've, and they address this to me, uh, now that you've seen more Digimon, uh, have you had any new ideas about what you want, what you'd want as a partner, Jay? Or is it still Devimon? Well, uh, the list of Digimon hasn't grown dramatically since then. Uh, I guess we've seen Edamon, who, as bad guys go, is a little disappointing. Yeah. Uh, it's just Elvis uh, in a banana suit, essentially. Uh, now, right now, uh, the slot feels like empty and open. I say this like I think that honestly, the big, the bad guy Digimon guided better could be really cool, but I don't know. Digimon's fairly disappointing, so ideally you'd get rid of him. Uh, but that just leaves an empty slot, and we'll wait until uh, something cooler comes along. And uh, I would have said, I guess, the first perfect level like, Digimon from the kids, maybe. Because, you know, the more powerful ones are better like that, ideally. Uh, but I'll get there. But uh, they're a bit disappointing when they do show up. <laughs> so we'll wait until the next bad guys show up, which I imagine will happen soon. And uh, assess how cool they are. But you like Palmon, don't you? Yeah, it's fine, as plants go. You like her voice. You, you, you told me that you liked her voice. Yeah, and that's a compliment to the voice actor, not to the Digimon personally. Palm, I like Palmon. She's my favorite. She is a plant. You're not wrong. Box, she, and then she turns into a boxing cactus. <laughs> That's pretty cool. This still stands as, like, the badge of how weird this show is. Um, Alright, so Anonymous also asked, uh, presumably a different one, and they said, uh, I feel like anime in general has a skewed sense of scale because of Japan's size, if that explains the Crest quest at all. That's interesting. Um, it, obviously, uh, it refers to the discussion from last week where... I talk about how the crests are all weirdly close together, that their grand quest for the crests only takes, you know, it takes three days, and every day they're finding them. Um, but at the same time, how long does it take to walk across Japan? A very long time. Yeah, even that doesn't really explain quite why it's all together. Maybe it is possible that as a perspective of scale, perhaps the digital world is way, way, way smaller, because you could argue that they're walking across, you know, a, a digital space, and it's at a different scale, but even then, uh, and I guess if you compress it down to Japan, maybe that's believable, but why would the crests all be in Japan? And in fact... The, the a crest shows up in this episode where it has no reason for it to be in a certain place. Um, it, I'd say, like a lot of theories, that it's possible, but there's no reason for it to apply other than that it's convenient. Oh yeah, which, definitely. Which was the problem in the first place. Like it, it's it has to be convenient because as I've as I've said before when we've spoken about this topic, then um that uh you know if if we we spent few more episodes looking for them I think it would just be boring like I everything has to be convenient because it's a tv show it's required to be convenient or it'll be like you know 10 episodes of looking for one crest and I don't think that that would be very interesting because they'll be just looking you know looking everywhere and I think that would take up most of the episode well I think that you should be thinking about it the opposite way where rather than how much more crest searching could they add to make it legit? You should go, well, how can they go about this writing that doesn't require the crests? 
Because let's be honest, the crest itself has not has no significance whatsoever. Well, the ta- the, the the crest has significance. It it barely needs it. You mean, you... Do you mean the tag? Because the tag has pretty much no significance except for the fact that it glows when it's near the crest. No, they're um they're a they're a joint issue. Whereas you you could have had them be updates for your digivice, right? They didn't need to be pieces of jewelry, or it could be anything. It could have just been an episode where they where they become more determined and figure it out. There's nothing to say that they had to get weird glowing jewelry. It looks or... cool though. Uh, that's that's a matter of opinion. Well, it's because it's paired with the holy device. It's another sort of holy artifact. That... But we've established that it's holy enough that it stops evil from touching it. But in a in a writing sense, the appearance of them is a, an extraneous. I don't know six episodes. Yeah. They were s- extremely unnecessary. Uh, and I'll I'll get into that more because. We have what is kind of incredible this week, in that we haven't seen it in a long, long time, if ever, of a unique plot. Yeah, it was is, very good. That isn't just the same episode written again and changed by the different thing they're finding yeah. and the Digimon they're fighting. Uh, and it was really weird, actually. And I'll get there, though, when we get to the episodes. Right. Yeah, like, I, I found these episodes to be, like, you know, they break the pattern that we've had for the last few, like, the, the pattern of everybody getting to the adult level and then, you know, Ty's arc, which was, you know, people get the crest, but it's mainly about Ty. I mean, well, and, uh, let's be honest, it doesn't break the fact that it's mainly about Ty. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's still about Ty, but this is, like, the end of a Ty arc. If you didn't like Ty, this is one. This is the episodes you don't like. I think he's better in Japanese because he's more realistic. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think he's better in Japanese only because the English writing is terrible. Yeah, yeah, like which well, the English writing, I think, I feel has gotten better since Jeff Nimoy took over, like a uh, in the last few episodes. Yeah, although these episodes have really so just well, the writing themselves isn't always terrible it has some of the worst and like laziest voice acting oh yeah for, for ty the, the voice acting oh no for, for, ty's for everybody like the one that really stands out to me in the first episode is a sora one right at the end oh the uh the beam, beam on i'm coming that one no 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 um it's uh the one where ty's just disappeared and she's like i can't remember the exact line oh in. you mean the episode like, we watched this week oh no come back <laughs> Like, she sounds like she doesn't care at all. Because the voice actor doesn't care. The the part that Ty said to me when he's like, when Greymon's just evolved, and in the Japanese version he's just saying, oh, um, he, it's it's a, it's his true evolution, this is this is the way it's supposed to be. But in the English version just saying, you have to use my courage, Greymon! And the way he just said it was just so forced. Yeah. And it didn't fit. I guess they're trying to fit with what what he what, what his mouth was doing, with what he what they'd written for him. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's a noble effort since they haven't been trying that at all all those other times. Yeah. Like, I mean, a lot of the stupid dialogue can be pinned to it's a kid show. But yeah. There are tons of kid shows that are absolutely incredible. You you don't get away with calling something a kid show as a means of waving away its quality. Avatar: The Last Airbender was a kid show, and that is one of the best shows I think ever made. That oh thing yeah, is definitely, absolutely incredible. And it's it's unfair to denigrate something's quality on the basis of its target audience. Uh, things like okay. The Teletubbies, perhaps it's not a, you can say, well, it doesn't need top-notch writing because it's a kid's show. But that is a kid's show aimed at two-year-olds. This, what would you say is the target audience? Uh, probably about eight, like about TK's age, I'd say. So you th- as, as like really? the, the average. You think that the target audience is younger than the average age of the kids in the show? Well, you 
always like I've noticed whenever there's a piece of media, the characters are always older than the audience. Like Lizzie McGuire, they're all like 16 year olds and like 14 to 16. But the target audience, I think, was a few years younger than that. So I think whenever there's a piece of media, the uh, well, I, I don't really know anything on this topic because I'm not a media student right. or anything. This is just from observation. So I could be completely wrong. But in my experience, like when I've watched things, I've always noticed that the characters are a few years older than the target audience. Right, but there's still a distinction with what I'm talking about. There's a huge difference between a show that's aimed at two-year-olds and a show that's aimed to eight to ten-year-olds. Oh, I think that the uh, the Avatar: The Last Airbender has a slightly older um, demographic than Digimon. Well, um, keep in mind I'm talking about the American version of Digimon here, where I think the target audience is a lot younger, and I think. So I've I read somewhere that the the Japanese version is aimed at like young teenagers, while I think the American version really they take away a lot of poop jokes. They take away the uh, where Taichi's dad walks in drunk in the pile in the prequel episode. Um, yeah, so I think that the Japanese version may be aimed at an older audience, but like by a few years, like young teenagers, like maybe twelve. 13, 14, but the Jap- the English version is probably aimed at a younger audience. That makes sense. Uh, we've got another anonymous here uh, on our Tumblr, and uh, they respond to our discussion of Homestuck, which, uh, how wise was it of us to bring it up? Who knows? Uh, and they say, uh, speaking of Homestuck, Taichi's character makes... S- uh, a lot of sense if you interpret him as a thief, especially in Skull Greymon episode. Um, sorry, I know this is about Digimon, not Homestuck, but it fits his arc well. Uh, that's a, it's a bit complicated because uh, the thief is capitalized, which implies that it's one of like the player classes in Homestuck, uh, which, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit complex to go into. Really, in this space, as much as I'd like to go into it. Uh, the dis- uh, a, a large discussion of Homestuck lore is not what we're here for. Um, I guess in this in this space, I will recommend you go read Homestuck. I I like it. It's fairly good. It's long though. It's very it's very long. It's, I I I really I really like it. It's something I really enjoy, and it, that I guess that'll make a lot more sense if you read it. But I don't think we'll be spending a good deal of time doing character comparisons between the two series. Um, we, appreci- like, we appreciate it, but uh, I don't think it's something we can really go into in a lot of detail. Uh, unless, do you know anything about that? Um, about, like, like, I know that there's a, there's Digi stuck, and I, like, <laughs> I, I've, I've seen some pretty good art from it, and I think I've seen Tai Chi as a thief a lot. And I think Sora is a seer of heart, just because, you know, love, heart, spoilers, I guess. Super creative. Well, okay, we've seen the crest and it's a heart, so what else are you going to call it? Wait, was spoilers for Digistuck or spoilers for the next episode? Spo- spoilers for what her crest is called. But you know that this is just a spoiler show, right? <laughs> so, yeah, but we haven't gotten to the part where... <laughs> Do but you know this, the names. It's just a spoiler show. Like it's all we talk about. The implication is, if you listen to this, you've already watched the show. Yeah, but I, I like to keep it relatively spoiler free. Okay. But yeah, we, we, we've seen what a crest looks like, and it's a heart. So what else are you going to call it? I feel like the person protecting from spoilers most is me. <laughs> yeah, but you know, anyone who's just, you know watching it along with us for the first time, maybe. So uh, we got a message from Fex Mafe. Or, uh, fex me if possibly. I'd, I'd say it would be fex me, if, but I could be uh, wrong. On the with the will forum, and they say it's been a while since you guys tried to rank the episodes in general. I'm curious if Bergamon's episode is still the best so far, in your opinion. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, I was going to get to this later, but I may as well say it now. Yeah, since this is brought out, I think that uh, the episodes today probably rank right up there next to it. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. If, if These episodes better. are good. 
Um, and I think it might actually be better if only because we've broken the monotony of the same thing over and over and over again. And I don't want to belabor that point too much because we have to talk about it when the episodes come up. But yes, I think this, these two, both of them, and I don't know which way, which order they go in, honestly. Um, but I think both of them shoot up to the top three spots pretty quickly. Oh yeah, definitely. What do you think is the worst episode we've, that we've seen? Oh, uh, you see, the worst episode is a really tough question because, like, it's you know, thinking of like an unpleasant memory in this case is just boring. The worst episode. Like, I'm trying to think of one where I just com- was completely brain dead and just kind of completely dis- like uninteresting. Um, I think the birth of Greymon was pretty like it's a lot of the no- the early ones except for like. Is that the soccer? That's the soccer one, right? No, the, the the birth of Greymon was the oh, wait, second yeah. episode where Agumon evolves. Yeah, but at least it, it was a novelty then. Like, I guess the one where Garurumon first shows up is just one of those nothing oh, episodes. I, I like I like that episode. Yeah, you see, like every episode has just a little bit of something, but I'm sure there was at least one where I'm like, this is just bad. See, the and... Garurumon was just the basically the birth of Greymon but about Matt but it had more character development it had that story it had Matt feel you know he's worried that TK doesn't think of him as a brother and he's worried that Tai Chi is a better brother than he is like actually, I like how sort of our first taste of you know plot character I'm actually looking at the the list right now and I'm just trying to remember which one I hate the most uh <laughs> I'm looking at some of them and some of the names are just getting me. I'm like, well, that was bad. Uh, but specifically just as a name. Okay, so... Uh, so the Arrival of Skullgrammer was pretty bad, but I'm not really sure if it counts because it's, it's wacky enough that it was kind of entertaining. Like, I, I liked that episode. Um, the Oh, the Piximon episode was really bad. Yeah, that that episode was like. I mean, I know I felt it was kind of necessary. I don't. But no, but it was like Ty like recovering from worrying about what happened to Algamon. He's worrying. Let's, let's be honest. It wasn't necessary. I know, but like, it would have been bad to have a character just be broken the whole time. No, it wasn't even that. Like he could. It was. Uh, it was directly told to the characters. Don't worry about it. You'll do it better next time. It's not going to happen this way every time. So all the consequences coming out of the bad transformation were unnecessary. And it didn't matter. And it was just kind of a waste of everyone's time. And Piximon was boring and accomplished nothing for the rest of the kids. And he was Yoda? It's just, that was a bad... I think that was probably the worst one so far. At least off the top of my head. It's the one... It's the first one, I think, in a very, very long time where I struggled to look at the screen to take in the visuals of the show because it was so bored. Yeah, I have to, I have to agree with you. That probably was one of the poorer episodes we've seen. Yeah. So, uh, can you go to the next one? Uh, yep. So, Chakmon, uh, with the will, says, uh, Jay said something uh, in the last episode about a moment uh, being a minute and a half. Uh, could you expand on that? It kind of piqued my curiosity on if a moment really had a fixed time measure. Uh, also, pearls before swine pretty much means someone has something that they don't understand the value of. If I remember, yeah, you know, if I remember right, then they say a great show. They hope that I love uh, her way from home, and that they say it's a great episode. And it's really press upon me the. Uh, geographic accuracy of Tokyo in all the real world trips that the kids make in the season. Apparently there's a lot of those. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, and that was quite impressive. And they, uh, I can't wait to see my um, take on Hikari. So step one, uh, the Pearls of Fourth Line thing, that's a good explanation. Uh, that makes sense. I will, I'll take that. It's interesting. Um, I because th- it was more of a it, they said casting pearls before swine, so I assumed there was like an action element to it. But no, it makes sense that it's just a valuable thing in front yeah. of like pigs. All right. Uh, yeah, a moment. Um, basically, uh, sundials were um, split into forty uh, sections rather than sixty. Uh, so a moment 
uh, and that those are called moments. So a, a per the period of time of a moment is a minute and a half. You can look that up. It's on Wikipedia. Uh, moment, like brackets, time. But our university didn't like us, uh, you know, referencing Wikipedia. No. So you have to find a better resource, Jay. Uh, Chaucer's Universe from the University of Michigan. That's one of the references from Wikipedia. So let's just go with that one. Yeah, I know. I I <laughs> always think Wikipedia is a fine thing if, as long as it's you know it's got a reference to the Wikipedia entry, which is usually if I ever referenced Wikipedia at university, I'd always reference the reference. <laughs> it's it's a clever it, life hack. <laughs> Yeah, if, if, you, if you're not allowed to reference Wikipedia, still go to Wikipedia because it's, a, you know, it's compiled information and then just reference a reference. And it'll lead you on your Google trail at the very worst. All right. Um, and yeah, I, I guess the problem with geographic accuracy uh, is that I can't recognize it because mm. I've never been there. Like... I'll take your word for it, obviously, that it's the, accurate and it has enough, the buildings are done in a specific way where you go, that looks like you saw that building, you took a photo of it and you just sketched it out. Yeah. But it could be an impressive, like, completely fictional city that I'm seeing, right? Yeah, it, it could, like, I have, I have been to Japan, but I don't think I've been to a Daiba. I would like to go to a Daiba. Like of and cosplay as a character we haven't met yet with an and like yeah that'd be pretty cool right um it's so it would be so easy for the show to be they put up uh they put up um uh a, a, an image of a city and they say oh look this is the city of Okonomiyaki which, <laughs> you know they just say that. And the city I'd, of sushi. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, it, it could have been any Japanese-sounding thing. And I'm sitting here going, I don't know, I guess that probably exists. It looks good, though. Like, the backgrounds in this episode are, like, are really impressive. It's true, which is, I imagine, why they skipped super hard on animation. <laughs> yeah, they got uh, Mamoru Hasoda, I think his name is. He's, uh, he's the one who did the prequel movie. And he yeah. did Summer Wars and The Girl Who Leapt Through Time. The guy clearly does cities pretty well. Yeah, like, the guy is a director and But you can you cool. can tell that their budget is constrained because the animation was often completely terrible. <laughs> yeah, like, it was very 90s. Um, especially in that episode, um, the Piximon episode, where they're just sort of floating in the distance while Piximon's walking away. Oh, it's really bad. Uh... Okay, so that's all, and also I've just learned also that there are going to be more real-world trips, which is interesting, because uh, there was a significant portion of this episode where I thought it might be a dream sequence, but I'll get there. So, this week on I Will so Show You Digi World, I forgot the words for a second. You, you didn't have to do the whole, the whole song and dance about it. But people like it. They can't even see the dance. It's not even a dance. It's me lying in bed and, you know, being half asleep. <laughs> it is early. Yeah, we, we didn't record last night because I had a really bad headache that I think an x-ray gave me. And uh, I was also sweet. Anyway, so this week it was Chuckmon on the With the Will forum that suggested this. Okay. And uh, Chuckmon says, suggestion for I will show you Digiworld with May and Jay. May you should play around at the original Digi Battle card game with Jay. That'll be pretty cool. And then he, uh, then they say about the the iPhone gap in the US called Digimon Fusion Fighters. Uh, that is a pretty cool, uh, simple and cute app game. It basically turns your phone into a Digivice and you get to press buttons and stuff. Um, but we also have that here. But anyway, so we played uh, Digi Battle. And what did you think, Jay? Do you want to talk us through? Okay, so from what I, this is a little bit. This is kind of a while ago now. This it's like is, a week. This is well, yeah, it's a, well, seven, six or seven days ago. Um, so we didn't technically play the original original card game. We played the English version. Yeah, uh, but th that's, once, what, that's what they're talking about. Well, Did you oh, battle the English version? Well, once upon a time, uh, I'm in, I'm in a game store, I believe, and and May shows up and she goes, "We should play this game." And she has a deck of cards 
And I'm like, all right, all right. And she puts them down, she flips them over, and they're all in Japanese. And I can't read anything. And I'm like, how can we play if I don't know what anything does? And she goes, no, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Let's just play. <laughs> so I remember this was a year and a half ago, actually. It was like two years ago. This is, yeah, almost two years ago. We're trying to pl- you're trying to get me to play this game, and you can kind of you can kind of read it, or you you know what they all do because you did your research. Yeah, I I, I can read it, <laughs> but I'm struggling. Katakana. I don't know if you've ever tried to play a card game where you don't know what anything does, but not only do you not know what anything does, you have no ability to find out. <laughs> uh, so that was that was a good time. So yeah, this this card game, uh, it's it's kind of interesting. The basic element of it is that you you pick a rookie card and you start evolving them, and uh, you basically beat the crap out of your your opponent. Uh, and it's a bit weird. Maybe it's possible we were playing it wrong. No, 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 we we were playing it right. Because the way it works is that most card games you draw a card at the beginning of your turn. In this game, you draw back up to ten cards at the end of your turn. And which means, which implies that you have to play cards to be able to draw more of them. Uh... And this this seemed to work fine because you'd throw out these things called power options, which would buff your guy, and you'd throw out like digivices and dudes to to evolve, and then your guy would die, and you make a new dude. Um, and it was it was fine, and it seemed to work well. And then uh, the balance is really weird, like because the rookie Digimon in the right circumstances can beat you know, an ultimate or perfect level Digimon, which you know, not exactly realistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a tiny cat shouldn't be beating, you know, the devil or a dragon or whatever. Uh, but what we ran into was because you can only draw if you play cards, uh, we ran into a situation where May had a, a handful of cards where none of them could evolve the the rookie she had. Uh, she had no power options to play in combat. And I discarded my rookies because you have to offline, which which is di- means discard if you want to evolve to some level, some Digimon. So like one would be um, offline two cards to evolve your Beomon into Kuagamon, and you, that means discard them. So I was like, oh, the best cards to discard are these two rookie cards, and that was a mistake. Yeah, well, it seems that there's no reason to keep them, but I guess as a as a guaranteed play, perhaps. But you, there was a situation where if you can play literally nothing, and your opponent has a better Digimon than you, you will just lose every you will lose every turn, and you can't do anything, and you are locked for the next four to ten turns of them just killing you, and then they win. Yeah. So it's, you, it's pretty unbalanced. Yeah, that and that's the that's a big key thing. It's it's quite unbalanced and. I'm a, I'm a really heavy magic player, and I'm I'm really we into, both are really, yeah, we're really big in the magic, and like this kind of like lack of balance in the card game sticks out immediately, um, and I don't know how you I don't know how you fix that, of like in the rule set of you only draw if you spend cards, there's always going to be situations where nothing in your hand applies because you drew badly. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, especially in this situation where you, you just drew every Digivice in your deck and you didn't draw any Digimon that go with it. Boom, your hand's locked forever. Well, I had a full hand of... Um, I had all my... all my. I'm going to use the English terms because it's it, they use the English terms in the game. I had all the mega-level Digimon in my in my deck and the rest were, were, were ultimate levels and I had a rookie. So yeah. I was going to lose to an ultimate-level Digimon. Pretty much. Um, so yeah, that that game was. Uh, let's put it J1. this way. We, let's put it this way. I, I won because I locked her to death. I I didn't do that intentionally, and we only played the one round of it. <laughs> yeah. So d- if if like there was a rule where you know you were drawing one card every turn like a normal card game, do you think you would have enjoyed it more or thought it was better? Well. 
I guess the problem is with that is that the game really encourages you to throw a lot of cards all at once. Yeah. In these big flurries, well, like you evolve, so it it requires, you know, it requires the Digimon. It requires you to discard two cards, or it requires a Digivice as well. Then in combat, you require because the the buffs that you throw at your guys are so small. You're usually going to be throwing more than one. Usually, I mean, sometimes they're just tiebreakers, but to overcome like a big deal, you'll be throwing two or three. So it makes sense that you're drawing a lot of cards. Um, there should be a rule where at the beginning of your turn you draw one. Yeah. But, but because of the way the game works, I understand why they have the drawback up to ten rule. Because you only have a, a you have a, th- a well after you've played you've after you played your rookie you have a twenty nine card deck, and w- once you've used up your whole deck, what you have to do is you have to take all the cards on your side and your hand and shuffle them, except your rookie, and shuffle them back into your 29-card deck. So, yeah, which means that... I, I imagine you just search out a rookie, then? Or no, you... no, no, you, you keep the rookie that's that's there, but you wipe everything else off the board yeah. and make the deck out of that. So it's back to 29-card deck. And so I totally see how the, the, the logic of that works, which is the, the harder you play, the more stuff you do, the more likely your board just gets hard reset. And that's, that's a cute idea of balance, but... Yeah, we we hit a roadblock that like we read through the rules and we couldn't figure out. Maybe I, I feel I like might, I, I might have missed something. Like yeah. I think there should be a rule where you know, like you, this could go two ways. It could be if you have ten cards in your hand but you can't do anything, shuffle them back into the deck and draw ten cards. Yeah. Or draw like three cards or whatever, or take everything off your side of the card and just. Hu- like your side of the deck and hard reset, that'd be fine because you're you're losing for not having anything in the hand. Or it there should, maybe should be a rule that says if you ha- um at the start of your turn, uh, draw back to ten. If you already have ten cards, draw one card. Yeah, the old there was an old Magic Mulligan rule, which was, uh, if you had no lands in your opening hand, you just have to do it for free. Yeah. The, the problem with that is that uh, a lot of decks. Especially combo decks, you can just keep cycling forever because they yeah, only run like two lands. Oops, yeah, oops, all, all spells is a is a deck basically what's called oops, all spells because you have all spells. Yeah. So you could potentially just say, oh, no lands. Here's my hand, and then just keep on, you know, shuffling and dealing yourself a hand until you have the perfect hand that'll just win you the game. Yeah, and you know you don't have to you don't have to prove to your opponents anything about it except that there's no lands, which is super easy. Yeah, um, like I like that rule because it's se- it's seemingly fair when you count a normal deck that needs lands to play things. But if you have a uh, a combo deck or any deck that doesn't need l- that many lands, then you can pretty much just rig a good hand. So yeah, it's it's pretty rough essentially, uh, and yeah, that that game was I I wouldn't play it again. That's pretty. It's fairly simple. Would you uh, if well, what rules do you think you could add to make the game better? Like, I think it was a. I enjoyed the game. Like, I thought it was a pretty fun game, until we discovered that you know you can just lock out your opponent, and if they're a rookie and you're a high level, you'll beat them every time. Well, I thought that, uh, I thought the abilities were fairly pointless. There were there were some of the cards. Basically, we had, well, I had a deck that was full of dudes with swim. So I uh, basically water Digimon of various descriptions, um, and May's deck was all dudes with fly. So I think no, no, they, they weren't with fly. They were vegetation and insectoid Digimon. But they had flying. That's, some of them did, and I had cards to give me flying. Yeah, so it had to do with flying a lot of the time, um, and that is essentially meaningless. Those are may they may as well just be colors. Because there's stuff that interacts with that in the sense that it says um, uh, if your if your dude has flying, give him plus fifty, or if your opponent has you know swimming, then you get plus fifty, or stuff like that. But the the action of flying or swimming doesn't mean a single thing, apparently. Yeah. Because it's not like they can dodge each other. The only core gameplay element is them punching each other. <laughs> like. The card that 
I really like. It has the best Digimon ever, which is Airdramon on it, and it's called Bomb Dive, I think. And it's like if your character has fly, if your Digimon has fly, um, you can increase your power by a hundred, and that's a that's a pretty good number to increase your power by. Yeah, that's a big that's a big one. Yeah, but I of course I didn't get to use it because none of my dude, none of my dudes had fly. Yeah, um, the average was twenty to fifty for the buffs. Yeah, like there's another one which was if your Digimon is vegetation, increase it by I think it's either twenty or fifty. Uh, essentially, um, uh, yes, yeah, so that's how I, I felt about that game. So we start off with a plan with with the children discussing a plan on how to get Sora back. Ty seems to be you know he's he's re- he's sort of recollected himself from the last episode where he was having a breakdown because he wasn't brave enough. So something I noticed is that TK offers um, to sleep next to the Digimon so they won't get scared, which is, you know, why would they get scared? He, he would be more likely to get scared. So maybe he's saying in the way of sort of like, oh, I'll protect you, but he's actually the one who's scared. But, I don't know. Yeah. It just sounds like a, a weird TK thing to say. Yeah, but this is actually Tekaru telling them to eat. Um, so that they can evolve whenever they want to, you know, because we've seen that Digimon evolve better when they're when they've been fed because they have the energy. What what I mean is that uh, because it was it was Tiki in English who said you know you can sleep next to me right. Yeah. Um, it, it it's it strikes me as one of those waving in the distance. You interrupted my train of thought. And now I don't remember what I was saying. Yeah, like it's he's definitely more of a kid in the English version. Yeah, I mean they all are essentially. They're all a lot more uh, vulnerable to being young and stupid, I guess I'd say. Yeah. And uh, we have a Moo line where Izzy says, Roger, and then um, I think Mimi says something like, wow, he's so stressed, he forgot his name. <laughs> but I think in the original she's just saying something like, be careful. It's always this really, like, normal lines that just that color the character well. They're the ones that just completely disappear. Yeah, like she. They definitely do make her very scatterbrained. Yeah, and they just take away all her. Like, she goes, "Oh, I feel seasick," and now it changes, and they give the seasick line to someone else, and she makes a reference to her uh, hair. It makes a reference to her hair. It's just every time. Uh, and it's it's just so weird because the Japanese Mimi has all these normal things she says. She's yeah, a definitely. normal person. Like sometimes she does say girly things, but she is like a ten year old girl, and that's fine. Like they just do they very much overdo it. Mm. Like I think she's quite a mature ten year old actually. It's just that they try really hard to to overdo it, which is it's just so weird. Well, I guess you know you have to have the comedy relief you know, dumb character. We have the comedy relief, intelligent character, and the comedy relief, intelligent, but also very nervous character. And then we have the comedy relief of the, the cool guy, which is basically all his lines. All his lines are just him, you know, being sarcastic. And, like, in in Matt's, you know, narration of the, the start of the episode, he's like, nice going, Ty. God, Ty, you're such you're so bad. Although, like, in his description of the episode, he was more enthusiastic than you'd expect. Yeah. It's not quite so cool. But he's just... He's a bit of a jerk in the English version, Matt, I mean. Like, oh, God, Ty, oh, nice plan, Ty. <laughs> he just... He feels a lot like Gary from Pokemon. <laughs> and I haven't Smell you Japanese, later, Ty. Yeah, I haven't watched the Japanese version of um, Pokemon, so I don't know if Gary's a jerk all the time, but he just reminds me of Gary. That seems totally reasonable. So then they're sort of setting up a plan that half the kids will work as a distraction and then um, then we'll have Ty and Agumon who are rescu- rescuing uh, Sora and uh, and that they hide at one point under a blanket and the dub doesn't really explain where this blanket comes from or what it's doing. But <laughs> yeah. it's actually... It, it's actually because of uh, Tekaru and Tokemon who are hiding there and who get the blanket and put it over them so they can't see it, which is, you know, it's, a, it's not a good disguise, but apparently it, it works, so. I don't know if this is the first time it happens in the series, but they're all they're all under the blanket and they're all sort of formulating their plan about, about to be ready to go. 
and uh, yeah, Togemon and Sekiro down there because they're fairly useless, all things considered, because he hasn't evolved yet. Uh, and there's um, there's Mimi and Palmon. They're just under the blanket, and all of this. I I feel like this is the first time it's happened. I'm not really sure. It goes from it goes from cutting to you see Mimi and Palmon right next to each other. Then Mimi goes, "All right, let's go." And then frame cuts, and then there's Togemon picking her up and running away. It, it never did the um. It never did like an anim uh, an evolution animation. They didn't do any evolutions except for uh, Tentamon to Kabuterimon, where Izzy and Tyre in the pyramid, and then Agumon to Greymon. I think it's because the ones at the start, like Gomon and Inkakumon, uh, and Palmon to Togemon, I don't think they were as necessary, and they didn't want to take up all this time with, you know, the evolution, which takes what like ten seconds, can take five if they use the shorter animation so maybe maybe it was in sort of the original cut but they had to delete it for time because a lot happened in this episode well look the show has a weird stance on how to use your evolution time i the 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 most ridiculous one i'm trying to it was in the skull Greymon episode they take a full 20 seconds to evolve um ladybugmon into kabu terrymon yep and then they have a one second thing follow up of nope can't do anything, and he was just useless. Yeah, that seemed like a bit of a time thing that they wanted to use up a little more time. Yeah, so they come up with what is a reasonable plan, and uh, so they they have you know kids outside distracting, and they figure out that um Nanamon who kidnapped Sora did not actually leave and is still in the pyramid. Yep. And I think Izzy goes into it a bit more in in Japanese, but in the English ver version, it's just something like, oh, I think this is what has happened. But he has, like, actual proof in the Japanese version of why he's still in the pyramid. It was... I can't remember what the proof was, but it's just, like, it wouldn't have made sense for him to leave. I don't know if Yeah, they... it was something like, he's still there, but in the English version, it was like, well, I have a theory, according to my calculations, that he is still... <laughs> Pretend he's only pretending that he left. He's actually still in the pyramid. How can you calculate that he's pretending? I don't know. It's just Izzy. Is that is that a mode or a function of some kind of um? Here's my formula. Yeah, but in the Japanese version, it seems like well, there was no way for him to go, so he's still there. So it was more of a sort of he knew that, but in the, it was just in the English version it was Izzy pulling it out of nowhere that it was that he thinks he's still there. Like, he wasn't exactly sure, but he was definitely sure in the Japanese version. Yeah, pretty much. So they, they go about their plan, and they, they bomb the crap out of the pyramid, which, you know, is imagery I like to see. Uh, throwing torpedoes at ancient Egyptian architecture is pretty cool. Upside down architecture. <laughs> which I guess would give it less structural integrity, all things considered. Um, that said, it didn't appear to scratch the um, the pyramid. It just shook it a little bit. Yeah, so it's a strong one. That's how that works. Especially since some of the walls don't exist. Uh, and so that, that goes on. Edamon runs outside to confront them. Realizes that some of them aren't around. Then monologues until everyone leaves. Yeah, basically. Because he's a complete genius like that. Uh, then the guys inside are going slowly enough that... Oh, and also inside we see Nanamon with um, Sora, and he has decided that uh, uh, he, that it is too dangerous to have uh, Sora running around with a Digivice and a Digimon she can evolve and everything. Uh, so he's yeah. going to make a, a puppet copy of her, pi uh, pixel or atom by atom or whatever. So... Perhaps one that, uh, when he has this, he can control uh, Piyomon. Um, and, wonder of wonders, he has discovered her crest. I think, he, no, I think he had it the whole time. How did he do that? I think he just found it and... But we've seen the way the kids find theirs in every situation, and you cannot 
collect them without the tag. Oh yeah, that's right. Maybe he was able to. Maybe it was already into in small form. But something I noticed is, does Sora seem a lot more submissive in the English version? Because there was a part in the Japanese version where she's just telling him off, and she's just saying, you know, oh, you only need me because you don't have the power to defeat Adam on yourself. Like she's, she's, you know, she's giving him a good talking to. But the English version, I don't feel like this was this was in the in the episode. Yeah, I think I think she did give up a lot harder. Yeah, she was just sort of saying, "Oh, I guess I'm captured now. I hope the others come get me." I but hope it in the works Japanese out. version, yeah, in the Japanese version, she's still like, "Oh, I hope, I hope, you know, I get rescued." But she's still, you know, she's still got some fighting spirit in her. She's not completely like submitting. She's not just, you know, waiting to be rescued. So th- then, Edamon does get to Izzy and Ty pretty quickly. <laughs> he just smashes through all the walls. He's very strong. He's able to just grab the Digimon, who are much bigger than him, even though they're, you know, they're adult level Digimon. They're quite big, and he's just throwing them places. Like he just picks up Pokemon and Kagumon and throws them. Yeah, which it seems reasonable because he's he's a level higher than them. But the show has been really inconsistent about how powerful the levels actually are. Yeah. Because you get these weird situations, uh, notably the next episode, where uh, Agumon, who is a rookie, kicks the crap out of Ogumon, who is a champion, I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it makes no sense that he should be able to do that. And, it's, it, and often, in the episodes before this, you know, a champion will somehow beat a perfect level. Uh, just because they're one of the kids' Digimon, arguably. Well, um, we haven't actually seen like the destruction of a perfect level Digimon. Oh, you don't We're see the destruction; seen... you see the defeat. There's a distinction. Yeah. Well, Andromon and Monzemon had black gears, so all they had to do was aim for the black gear, which I think is a lot weaker than the True. actual Digimon. I think they're. I think the black gears are always, you know, easily broken if you aim for it and punch it. Well, that's the thing with um. Uh, the teddy bear mon is that they couldn't aim for it because they didn't know where it was. It was inside completely. It just so happened that the way Togemon works in the spray, it must have hit it. And also, Togemon has that type advantage. Yeah, I guess. But also, Togemon's also a really good Digimon, maybe. So maybe we should just always just get Togemon to do everything. Nah, we we see that today that he's a uh, he's not amazing at every, she's not amazing at everything. To yeah. Edamon, uh, in a in the Japanese, they add these hilarious like what da, 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 sounds to Edamon grabbing all the needles out of the air. He's very wacky. Um, all right, so yeah, Edamon busts through. He, he attacks them, finds Nanamon, figures it out. the The whole let's clone Sora thing didn't really work out. Like the clone finishes and just stands there as a du- as like a puppet and then never moves and never says anything and then it gets dissolved. Yeah, I don't think he's quite done with it yet. Maybe, yeah. but so when be- before Ty gets there, um, you know he's he's standing in front of the the electric fence that he was so scared to go through last time, so he couldn't rescue Sora. Well, so Algamon of... comes up and says in the English version, "Oh, I'll break through it." Which I don't think that's possible because you know it's you know it, it's an electric fence and I think it's stronger than fire. But um, you never know. Th- this in the this in the Japanese version is just Agumon saying, "Don't worry, Tai. I'll 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 go th- instead of you. I'll I'll go through instead." But then Tai Chi just says, "There's something very precious to me on the other side of the wall." And then Agumon says, "Sora," and then Tai Chi says, yeah, but that's not all. I feel like there's something else very precious over there that I lost yesterday. So he's referring to his courage, that he just he was he was too he was too cowardly to go through because he just realized that if you die, you die. Well, is it is it really losing your courage to not walk into certain death when you don't yeah. have to? But he still like even though he knew where the the fake part was the part where he could just go through, he could do it. Like, he he was able to go through so easily when he thought that he's, he could just respawn, like, in a video game. That seems fairly reasonable. Yeah, so he, he did lose his courage because he did know it was, like, that one point was safe and he knew exactly what point and still he didn't go through. Oh. So he... 
so Agumon sort of cheers him on in both versions, but it seems much more louder in the in the Japanese version. He seems like, yeah, go Tai, go Tai. He's like cheering. But in the English version, just him saying, Tai, you can do it. And he's just quite, he's quietly saying it, but he, it's still sort of the same sort of you he's cheering him on. It. So he goes through and the crest lights up for like the silhouette through his clothes. Which is... Uh the first time it's actually had a reaction since he got the crest and everything. Yeah. Um. So we know that this is, you know, this is a good thing. So Edamon shows up sort of like rolling with Kabuterimon down the stairs and um, Agamon evolves to Greymon. And then while Ty goes through the, the fence and he talks to, he confronts Dada or Nanomon um, who is got Sora, and he starts talking to the clone. Uh, and so, yeah, the clone doesn't react to everything. Uh, he opens up the ground, which is a thing he can just do, apparently. Yeah. Just at will. He just opens the ground up, which seems a little bit a little bit freakish. We had a trapdoor lever thing. Well, yeah, but it doesn't open a trapdoor. It just melted the ground outwards. Yeah, but it was scary, though. A little bit. So then Ty and Sora, you know, they're grabbing onto each other so they don't fall. And then Ty gets the Digivice and the Crest back and gives them to Sora. So Piyomon's able to evolve and he, she can break these cuffs and they fly away, which is actually really useful. Her, dig, her Digimon does a thing. Which is good, because it wasn't just Greymon coming along and rescuing them. It was her Digimon, her power to evolve the Digimon. Which I liked. Uh, yeah. Which, uh, yeah, they've always had to They've always have to hold on to the thing. Um, it, it was really, yeah, Nanomon is such a, it's, it's fairly lame. Especially in English. Yeah, like he's the, uh, he's basically just a robot and that's his character. And there's this really weird moment in the English where it's I, I don't know if it's done intentionally, where uh, they're hanging there and Ty is holding up Sora. And also, by the way, Ty is holding up Sora, and it's really obvious to anyone who's who has half a brain that all Nanamon needs to do is walk up to Ty and kick him in the face, right? Yeah. He's basically. kind of he's kind of struggling to keep Sora up. But his plan is instead to reach both his arms out and kind of just try to dislodge them. Like, he's trying to pull apart a Chinese finger trap. Whereas what he should be doing is just kicking over Ty. Just, just, yeah. just lever him over. Because think, then they'll both go. I think he's still quite weak from, you know, he rebuilt himself. Yeah, like, I think he's still weak from when Edamon just kicked him. There's a huge difference between weak and stupid. You don't really need to do much. You don't need to, like... You don't even need to lift the whole weight of this ten-year-old child. You only need to kind of like lift, like his legs, so he stops having as much like grip and traction, and then he'll just naturally fall forward because uh, he's got the weight of another ten-year-old child pulling him down. Yeah, well, I of course he's not. I don't think he's necessarily smart as a bad guy because he's definitely not smart as a bad guy. I don't think he's necessarily a bad guy. I think he just is really mad about how Edamon just hurt him and you know made well, him have to rebuild look, himself. You can be as angry as you want, but once you start doing bad things to children, you have become a bad guy. Yeah, but like, I just of course, he, also he's a bad guy for two episodes, so yeah, because like, that's all he's around for. Yeah, so I don't think that there's that the the bad guys who are around for only a few episodes aren't necessarily that good at being bad guys. Well, I guess not, considering how he ended. Like, may, that, well, sort of Debimon wasn't necessarily good as a, being a bad guy because he was really only in the actual episode with the children for, like, three episodes. There was the episode where he showed up. We have gone in to, at length just how bad of a bad guy Debimon actually was. But he was also the first level boss, so... Yeah. I think Edamon's better as a bad guy. Because, like, he's, he's threatening. He, he tries to kill them. Like, and gets pretty close to. Yeah. Um, so, so then they're in the outside, and then they've all been sucked, like, Edamon was sucked into sort of this, like, the hole with um, Dardamon, who pulls him down. So now, all of a sudden, he's buff, 
and he's like attached to the, the his dark his own dark network. And the way it was described is like if you get down there, you just dissolve and die. But uh, Edamon gets down there and just kind of lodges into it, and then gets on his weird monkey steroids. Well, that's fair enough. Like it's his dark network. Like it's, I it's guess his, it's his power. So, but I don't know. I, I feel sense like he doesn't just evolve. I feel like it's like and saying die. this is my pool of lava, so I'm immune to it. Yeah, no, but it's his attack. Like you know, if a Digimon makes their lava attack, they're not going to get hurt by it necessarily. If Meromon, if Meromon can't be hurt by his own flames, unless he's got a black ear. <laughs> anyway, so they're outside, and Tai realizes his crest is glowing. So, and this is very different, like, he still sort of says, Greymon, you have to digivolve, but it's different because he's walking with him, he's saying, don't worry, Greymon, I'm with you, instead of, Greymon, I'm going to run over here, you you evolve, which is what he did in the Skull Greymon episode, he was very cowardly, he was only just, you know, he was running there just to get a rise from his Digimon, he was still quite, you know, he was cowardly, but he wasn't walking alongside his Digimon, he wasn't, you know, being a, a team. He was just saying, you evolve so you can defeat him and then that's fine. Uh, yeah, I, I see that. But I guess the problem is that because the kids literally do nothing in any given combat, that it's really difficult to understand why he would need to physically be traveling next to him. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not, um, in, it's not amazingly necessary to the actual process of having his Digimon evolve and fight, because you're walking next to Digimon and then he evolves, and then you run away. Yeah, but he's still standing with him even after he evolves. Yeah, although that seems immensely dangerous. Yeah, but you know, he's got he's he's not afraid because his Digimon's there and he has faith that Metal Greymon can protect him. Speaking of Metal Greymon, I give I gave Japan a lot of guff about them not caring about spoilers in their titles, and this episode also Americans got spoilers in their titles. All so, of them do that, though. All of the titles have referenced oh, the no, Digimon that evolves. Often the well, in, the Japanese ones, yes, definitely, and um, the American ones, sometimes they, they, they skirt around it. I think the Angemon episode, it doesn't... It's in the English version. It's not called it, but it's definitely Angemon Awakes in the Japanese version. I know that's what I'm saying, but in this one, the English one does it as well. Um, yeah. And. Uh, but the champ, the, the adult level Digimon also had their episode, like Togemon in Toy Town, Theomon gets firepower, Garurumon, uh, Birth of Greymon. Like that, that they're still like. I feel like this episode could have just been named like you know. You know, um, the rescue of Sora. Yeah, it's something like Nanomon's that. Nanomon's defeat or whatever, and it could have still, you know, oh, they're good. They're gonna, they're gonna rescue Sora, and then Greymon evolving be like a, oh, that's happening. Like yeah. I think that's a that would have been a better way of doing that because I, I, I was, you know, even though I've seen this before, I do remember seeing it for the first time and being like, yeah, when's it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen now? It's going to happen now. I was just like, it was like, what, what's going through my brain the whole time? And, you know, it's, it would be better to have that as a surprise. That's, that's something to be said for, um, for surprises. Uh, and in this case, um, it transforms. And I'm going to say this first off. Metal Greymon looks like crap. He yeah, is he's, terrible. He's metal on Greymon. And the animation for him was super lazy. It's very, it's you know, very PlayStation, and like the Digivice that we saw in the episode where Angemon of, um, shows up. His, it's just that sort of, three, that three D, thing. Like, no, but that that exists and that's fine, but like once he that was all done, his actual animations were really really lazy. Like the worst one of them was his super powered me- mega move was he glows white which requires him to not move at all, and then his cell, sh- they just shade it white, and then he yells out his big move, in which his jaw doesn't move to make any noise, and then two animated fish missiles come out of his chest. So he never actually had to move at all. We see Katy Perry again then. 
Yeah, because the fish missiles nev will never stop. Um, then, uh, yeah, so he, he shoots his fish missiles at Edamon, and Edamon uh, basically creates a, a vacuum that sucks people in. Well, by people, I mean it sucks Ty and Greymon in, and they just and disappear. Digimon. Like, uh, Tyranimon, I think, is sucked into a, a bunch of Monochromon, the, you know, those sort of Digimon that we saw before. I didn't, oh, I must have missed that. And also something I noticed is when, in the English version, when Metal Greymon, uh, you know, when Greymon's evolving to Metal Greymon, he's growling the whole time. Like, in the English version, just growls. What do you think that means? I don't know, they just added a lot of growls, like... Are they trying to show that he's in pain? Is evolving a painful process? Because in the English version, there's just all these growls. In the well, Japanese version, there's you know just him saying, "Greymon um, super evolve," which is another thing. The English version, it's still Digivolve, but in the Japanese version, it's Cho Shinka, which is basically super evolve. Well, as far as the growling goes, there are two elements of that. A, you could you could argue that he's angry in the moment and wants to kill Edamon, and B, and I don't know if he does it all the other times, but B, uh, the tr the process of his evolution from Greymon to Metal Greymon is just having bits of him ripped off and replaced with metal, which I oh, imagine yeah. would hurt. Yeah, like, sometimes I think evolving is quite a painful process because your body is changing. And not, like, slowly. It's like, you know, it's happening in a matter of seconds. So when Tentumon talks, uh, like when, when he does the Digimon Analyzer in English, he, I think, he, I'm not sure I misheard this, but it sounded like he said instead of Giga for his attack, he said Jija. Uh, I don't, I don't remember that. Like, I don't know. I was in a, I was in the the dentist waiting room at the time, so I could have not been paying attention. But I'm pretty sure he said Jija, and I'm also pretty sure he named the Japanese version of the attack, not the English name, because it's that they're, they're still they're both Giga something, but one's Destroyer and one's something else. It's a Giga drill break. <laughs> That's uh. They... Yeah, it's um the the dub name is Giga Blaster, but Tentumon still calls it Giga Destroyer, which is the original name. It's a slightly cooler name. Which one, Destroyer? Yeah, Destroyer. Giga yeah, Destroyer. But... It's cool. Yeah, maybe they changed it because you know it's. Blaster is a very kid word. You get your water gun, but it's called like the water blaster, or you know, it's got a cool hip name for the kids. So, as I said before, this part is, you know, it's Tai Chi saying, "Oh, this is Greymon's tr uh, true evolution," but it's instead it's so uh, this. You have to defeat him. Well, you have the power, but the way he said it is just kind of stiff and forced. Instead of you know, he's just sort of saying quite softly to himself, I think, oh, so this is Greymon's true evolution. Yeah. Uh, the, the really forced dialogue really starts to show up here because there's, like, tension, and you think the kids would be excited, and they're just kind of talking. Yeah. So, yeah, they get sucked into the uh, into the void, and then we see Koromon and Tai surrounded by humans, and they don't, they're not, like, the weird-faced Bakemon humans. Um, and they don't, they don't look sinister. They just look normal. They're not looking at him. They're just walking like normal. So is he home? It did, like it's just, he's disappeared into this weird land, and he's looking around. He's like, "Well, this is this is weird," and I'm watching it and now. I'm going, "Well, this is weird." So, what do you think of this episode as someone who is new to Digimon? Okay, well, here's the big deal with this episode, and it has something, and I didn't. It felt really... It, the episode itself felt really different. And I realized why that was when we were about halfway through... When I was about halfway through it. And I go, this episode had continuity. Which is the first time any episode has, I believe. Yeah, there's there's minor things. Like, okay, they, they now have the... They got the quest last time, so they have it this time. Or they evolved last time, so now they can evolve this time. But those are all, like, steps... That once taken, you're you're higher up in the steps now, whereas this one, it Sora got kidnapped, so she's still kidnapped. So they have something to go do, which is rescue rescue her, which means that at the end of the last episode, there wasn't a conclusion. There was a cliff. Well, cliffhanger is a bit of a a bit of an overstatement, but 
there was a source of tension that continued rather than every episode concluding with, well, we did it. We finished it. And so, you know, they, they go about this rescue mission and they have to, you know, come up with a plan and their plan isn't go defeat the evil Digimon, it's go save our friend, which unto itself is fairly unique from what they've been doing so far. And just it felt really different because finally they're breaking away from the formula of every episode is a step in the progression of them getting more powerful. Yeah. Or stepping on stones to defeat the bad guy because that's what it has been every time. Yeah, I I like this episode because as I said earlier, like it really seems like a unique episode. It doesn't follow any line. We're not sure what's going to happen, but you know, it's it's a good episode. Yeah. Um was there anything else to discuss about it? Uh yeah, did you think the changes were justified? Um honestly, uh the biggest changes that I remember were just voice acting problems. Oh yeah, definitely. And oh, and the Sora being more submissive and yeah, you know uh, not as fiery. Well, in that case, yeah, obviously it's not entire. It's not particularly justified because Sora's personality isn't like that, and it's done as such. I I believe in the English to make Tai seem more heroic. Because yeah. if it looked at all like Sora could have taken care of herself or that she didn't completely need rescuing, then it would undermine the, uh, you know, the American, you know, hero leader coming in to help out. Yeah, and I like him not being heroic because that's not what his crest is. It's not the crest of being a hero. So he's not, you know, necessarily... He's, he's rescuing her basically because it's his fault, I feel, in the Japanese version, but in the English version it's more... I'm rescuing her because she needs rescuing. Yeah. Um, like, he seems very apologetic in the Japanese version. Like, you know, because it is sort of his fault. He lost his courage because he wasn't able to go through the fake part of the fence because he was worried he'd make a mistake, even though he had Izzy there saying, you know, that's the, we have to do calculations, that's the right spot. I'm out calculations, that's the right one right there. Also, I'm not sure why I had, in the previous episode now I think about it is uh, why did it have to be Ty to go through like when Izzy and Joe were both there why couldn't Izzy go through I know it was because it's in the script to make him lose his courage but it could have been you know they could have seen Ty struggling and Izzy or Joe could have just said okay I'll go through first then yeah you gotta go by the script we get back to where we were before and it's Coromon and Ty just sort of staring, sort of, they're saying, where are we? And then a, a girl hits Coromon in the face with a ball. And then Ty says, are you a digital girl or a real girl? Well, I think he might have said digi girl, actually, now I think about it, because this episode does have a lot of digi in yeah. the English version. What was your digi count at the end of this one? Oh, I, I didn't count it because okay. I didn't think to until, like, I was, like, more than halfway through the episode and I realised... Man, they keep on using that word. So yeah, so uh, he go, in the English he's like, Shh, Karma, maybe if you pretend to be a soccer ball, no one will notice. And he's... Because Koromon made the girl cry, Dub Koromon is worried that the police might arrest him, and I'm not sure he should know what the police are, but the, in the original this is just when Ty says, Oh, you scared the girl. Koromon's just saying, I'm not scary, am I, Ty? Am I? Which is, you know, much more realistic. Well, not realistic. I guess it's, he's, it's realistic as it can be for a show about monsters. Uh, pretty much. Um, and so he runs off uh, to, to make sure that he is where he thinks he is because he couldn't get any, any answers from the girl. Uh, and it should be stated that at this point, I was, I was absolutely 100% on the belief that this was a dream sequence. You can't have that. And even Ty thinks that. Like, even Ty goes through the, the thing saying, oh, this is a dream, or the digi world was a dream. Uh, well, I don't think the digital world was a dream, because obviously the main show is set there, and if it was a dream, it would end right, the, the whole show would end right now. But it would make sense for this to be a dream. I mean, he, when, he went in, 
he was riding yeah he was pushing himself on a bike you know in the inner city area in a weird dream sequence before yeah but it was different there because it was very misty it looked like it wasn't real i guess and uh i, I felt there were moments in this one which made it feel not real like the digimon appearing no, 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 not, not, not so much that. Honestly, that's probably the least of the weird bits that make it not real. Also, so when Ty says, "Oh, I have to go home," in the English dub, they say that he went on the subway, but he actually didn't. He says, "Oh, I'm, this is actually a place near my home," so he just walks the way home. That makes sense. Like it's not like a, and it was not an important change, but it's just something I noticed. Right. There's so he so he gets home unless I'm missing something. They they look at the home and Coromon's all like, "Wow, you live here?" Because he thinks he's talking about the whole apartment building. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "No, no, it's just a, it's just an apartment." Uh, and they they talk about there was, so they so it zooms over the um the the doorbell, and I like in English they're like, "I remember when we put the the family nameplate on the door," but. The, there's no nameplate in the zoom. I know it's not in the zoom, but we still we do see it before. Oh, okay. But there are there are also I don't think there are flowers in the zoom either. The only thing that's relevant to what he's saying is the intercom where he used to buzz his friends up, and I don't think that's what an intercom like. I think that's just a doorbell. <laughs> I don't think it's like the intercom. It's like because it's right outside the. I know, I'm really confused because like it appears to be right outside the door. Yeah, I thought the intercom was you know outside of the building, which is you know fair enough to buzz up your friends, but this is him at the door with the doorbell. Yeah. And I just think it's sort of like a who is it? Okay, I'll I'll open the door then, rather than an intercom, which was like okay, I'll let the lift come up for you now. And they they look around, and. Uh, there's a, a cute little sequence where uh, Ty gets to have like soda. Oh, oh you, you know, you're, you're missing out when oh, um, okay. when they go in and Coromon says, "Oh, this is a lot smaller than I thought," which is referencing how before he saw the whole building and thought that was his house. <laughs> yeah. He just sees this apartment room, and then Ty she yells at him. But in the English version, this is replaced with um, Coromon saying, "Oh, maybe they went to the Digi World too." And then Ty just yells at him, saying, "That's that's not funny." Oh, that's pretty rough. I, guess that makes I, I sense. think I think the line, the the oh, this is a lot smaller than I thought, is fine because in the English version, Coromon still says, "Wow, you live here," so they could have still kept that part because it's still referencing a line from before. Um, but yeah, so what happens right after that? Because it was uh, it was quite. Late at no, it wasn't late at night, but uh, he has soft drink. Yeah, okay, that's the next thing. So Ty has soft drink for the first time, and it's really interesting because you, you think, well, he's he's been gone for he doesn't know, so he thinks it's months, and maybe <clears throat> it's possible that uh, the crest quest took longer than the ep- than the episode showed you, but as far as distance traveled, I was it really did appear that it's one day per episode pretty much every time. Uh, but he, he speculates they've been gone for weeks or months, and weeks would make sense. They would have been gone for like three weeks. Um, but it they discovers uh, after an adorable section where uh, Coromon tries to drink out of like a, a Coke can, which is hilariously awkward, um, that it's the same day. He never left. Or... It appears that he never left, and he he goes and calls up all his friends, and all his friends' houses, and all their parents are saying, "Well, they just went off to camp." So his friends are all still gone, but he's here, yeah. uh, and I believe then Kari shows up. Yep, yeah. and she straight away, she she's very talkative. She's just saying, "Oh, hi, hi, Ty and Coromon." So this is where I was really convinced it was a dream sequence, because I think it might have just been like an animation mistake or something. But her eyes are huge, and they have this weird like look to them, where they're like they're kind of blank. They're, yeah. She looks really weird, and she's like so. Sit. She's kind of it's like she's staring off into the distance. Yeah, well, she's what, sick. 
Yeah, I know, but what I'm saying is that she's standing there, she's looking at her brother, who's just come, who's come back from where she thought, she thought she was going to camp. Also, Coromon's there, and she's just kind of staring off into the distance, and nothing, it's just not getting through to her, despite that she's reacting a bit to it. So I really thought this, this felt like a really dream sequency thing to do. And yeah. It's just that as it went on and on, and she's like, yeah, I know Coromon, because of course she does, she remembers that from when she was, like, three. Yeah. Despite that the other kids don't know. Um Yeah, so she so she remembers who Cormon is kind of, although she doesn't explain it. She just says, Yeah, I know who that is which is really the lamest way to not just tell Ty right now, Hey, remember that time that I rode a dinosaur? Hmm. And like it showed the whistle and everything, but Season one of um, Digimon doesn't actually start with the movie. I, I mean, it it would, yeah, technically in in a chronological order. In the, but in in Japan, it did. If you were to watch, I imagine if you were to get season one of the of the show on DVD, it would not start with it. On oh, well, I have the season one of the DVD in English, and it definitely does not have it. There you go. Because in the English Digimon, it's just part of the movie. Which has three parts, which is actually just three individual movies. So, her explanation of how she knows this is really bad, which is, in fact, I believe in English, she says, uh, I've been to the digital world. Well, you have, which is a completely meaningless statement. Yeah. Um, and just... For, why would she say she's been to the digital world before? She has no... the dub, and it, it it's a lie. Okay, the biggest lie, which I think is hilarious, is because uh, I, I wonder like, why. I, I thought to myself, why is Kari at home if TK is on the camp and they're the same sick. age? And it's yeah, explained. She's and, sick. and they say she's sick, right? Yeah. Then in the English, Ty is talking to her, and she's talking about the digital world, and he goes. Man, if I didn't know better, I'd think you were sick. I'm going to check you for a fever. And they cut to the bit where, in the Japanese, is checking her for a fever. And she's like, stop that, I'm not sick. Yeah, but she's actually, like, quite badly, like, she's just quite unwell. It's it's really weird where in, Japan, in Japanese they go, I'm sick. And then in English they go, no, she's definitely not. And there's no reason for them to change that. In fact, they have to write around the animation to make her not sick anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of completely bonkers and meaningless. I don't understand. Um, then she's hanging out with Coromon because they're best of friends forever. And uh, he's eating watermelon, which is fun. And she... So it brings up the idea that maybe he'll have to be there for a long time, if not forever, because they don't actually know how to travel between the worlds. Uh, and then I believe they're watching the news, and you get to... you the, the mystery of the first episode is revealed, of why the weather is so messed up. Yep. In that apparently there are spirit Digimon around. <laughs> but this implies that they've always been around, well, right? Yeah, so it's also implied throughout the episode in the English version that some people can see the Digimon because in the news report it said some pe- uh, it, it's also mass hysteria because some people are able to see monsters. If you're seeing monsters, please get yourself checked out. But this is, you know, obviously not said in the Japanese version. In the Japanese version, the only people who can see the Digimon are Ka- Akari, Taichi, and Koromon. Yeah, and... I, I was. I thought that I thought that the Digimon in this episode would have come through in the portal with him, because they're, you know, they're like Tyrannomon and stuff, and they were the ones who got dragged through. But if the weather was already weird before they left, I guess it's the same day, but that's a time paradox. <laughs> but that said, I guess technically, if he left on one day, and was sucked through earlier. In that day, you never know. Mm. There might be some time paradox stuff going on here. It's, I guess it's hard to say. It is entirely possible that when Ty was at camp, he was also at home. Because we don't know the exact time that he went through the, the tsunami portal to the digital world. Yeah. 
So it is entirely possible that there were two ties in the in the real world for a bit. <laughs> well, that's what. Well, well, I think Koshiro did say that in what in the episode where he's when he just finds out about stuff about the digital world. He's saying yeah. we could be there still at camp, but we could be you know. But one of us is here, but like there's still a body in the in the real world. But, but while just... while we're talking about time, um, the date is August first because Home Away from Home in Japan came out on August first, nineteen ninety nine. So that's the that I think I'm pretty sure that's the date came so out. So wait, so the show the show began and projected a date forward. Like by a couple of years, like by like six months or so. Well, we didn't actually know the date that they went into the the digital world, but they put the date of this episode as the date where it came out. So they went into the this is this is the day that they all went to the digital world. That's is that Odaiba Day. Yep, yeah, Odaiba Day is August first. Okay. But uh. Also, in the English version, they remove 1999 because they don't want to date the show. And I'm like, honey, you <laughs> date the show with the lines you've said. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, like, you... going through the floppy drive? Like, did they think that they'd be using floppies, drive, like floppy disks and floppy drives, like, you know, 10 years or 20 years in the future? Even, on... Even a few years after that, floppy drives were dead. Even on mute, the, the show is dated because you see Koshiro's laptop and just all the stuff on it. And you're like, hey, well. It looks like a Mac. Yeah, I don't, I don't mean the, the design of the box. I mean, you look at the screen, and what are your two options? You have white background, black code, or you have white, black background, uh, and then wireframe 3D. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we do see more of it, and it does look. It sort of looks like a Windows 2000 sort of OS, but it's sort of different. But it's, it's sort of similar to the Windows 2000 OS, I think. So Ty starts to cook for Kari. And he, I think he's cooking omu rice in the original, which is like a lunchtime food, because when we look at the clock, it's lunchtime. But in the English version, he says, I'll cook you breakfast, even though it's like after 12. Um, yeah. So then um, Kari breakfast. says, oh, wh- wh- where'd you learn how to cook? And did you, did you learn how to cook at camp? But um, even though Tai Chi had cooked before, and I think in the prequel, he's seen to be cook, uh, he's, that he's cooked before for his sister. Like he's cook, when, when he's saying, "I'll bet these will take, taste better than your eggs." But uh, so we have seen him cook before. But I guess the the prequel hadn't aired in America. But um, the episode in both in in both versions it is said that. Yamato helped him learn to be, be a better cook. But in the English version, apparently, it's like, oh, you've never cooked before. But even though he had. Yeah. Uh, the And I think it's really weird, though, because how is it possible that Matt could have taught him to make this in the digital world? Well, they had eggs. We, we saw them eat eggs, and they, they had a discussion on um, what they like on their eggs. Yeah, but you mentioned there was uh, that's also like a rice dish, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, they wouldn't have had that. Maybe they had rice. I what, don't know. In their fridge that only had eggs in it? I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's multiple options. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what happens next? So they, they eat. So the, t- the, the computer, or maybe the TV comes on, and it's Koshiro, and he sounds very monotone and very mysterious. He's just sort of like, Ty, you don't need to come back here. And he sort of says that. But in the English version, Izzy sounds normal, and he's just saying, Ty, it's dangerous. Don't come back here. But he sounds completely normal, but it still doesn't match his sort of mysterious expression he has. But, you know, you think, oh, he, there's something that's going wrong. And, you know, that is he's normal and he's telling him not to come back. But this is explained later. I'm sure it will be. Because, but... you know, the, as, as it said, like, time in the digital world moves a lot faster than it does in the real world. So things are happening during, during the, like, what, the hour that he's been home. Well, during the like, hour he's been past... home. In a comparison of how long he must have been gone, say he if he, if they left in the middle of the day, and given that he's returned in the middle of the day, if he's gone for an hour, then the rest of his friends have probably lived a week, which is fairly significant. Yeah. So, and that's you know we'll find out what happens later on. Um, so then, um, after Koromon's done eating, like 
he he's just saying, oh, I feel so full. Oh, no, I feel so full in the English version. But this is actually him just, he's, he's basically pooping himself in the Japanese version. Absolutely genius. So Kari says, oh, you can sit on the toilet in the, in the English version. But he's actually just, he's pooped himself and Ty's cleaning up while Kari and Koromon are talking. But uh, so Hikari and Koromon are uh, talking and then she says in the Japanese version, oh, yeah, I used to wet the bed a lot. But Taichi would always wash my sheets and he would always take the blame for it. But the story has changed in the Japan in the English version because they're trying to make it less talking about, you know, pooping yourself and wetting wetting the bed. And Kari's just saying, Oh yeah. Well, once when um we went, um, you don't have to worry about not acting cool or around us because it's fine because Koromon's just saying, Oh yeah, I'm not for, I'm sorry for not acting very cool and eating a lot, I'm a pig. And then she says, oh, don't worry about that because when I went on a field trip to um, a pig farm, I slipped and I fell into the pig pen and then Ty jumped in and started, you know, rolling around to act like I've done it on purpose. What a bro. So it's sort of like they removed, like, all lines about, you know, wetting the bed or pooping yourself. Which is appreciated. Like, it's just, I don't know, again, the Japanese uh, cultural appreciation of the poop joke is not transferred over to the west and it's one of the it's one of my favorite changes to english which is just really really toning it down yeah uh so yeah they see they see um digimon outside the phantom digimon from the phantom zone um and ty goes out to confront them and they start disappearing sometimes and so he's chasing around the city until he finds Ogamon, who's just kind of standing there. Until, yep, crossing the road. And then he just starts attacking them. And yeah, there's, a, there's a whole like, chase scene as Koromon just bubbles about uh, until he evolves into Ogamon and beats Ogamon single-handedly. Because mm. that's how that goes. Ogamon and the other partner, Digimon, have gotten stronger on their own. Like, But you, are you saying that Ogamon by himself is stronger than a Digimon of a higher level than him? Well, it's also the data type. Agumon is a vaccine and Ogamon's a virus. I guess. And also, Ogamon is stronger now. Like, he's stronger than he was when we first met him. Like, it's not just the fact that he can evolve now, but he's also stronger than when they first met. But it's also is because of the type. I guess. And I don't think he really so much as beats him as his evolution triggers, like, a hole in the sky to absorb all the Digimon. That's, it's very odd. And so I guess everything starts getting vacuumed up, uh, and Agumon just leaves. He just books it. And then Taichi realises that he has to go to protect his friends as well. But then Kari, who the whole time has sort of wanted him to stay, and in the English version she's just sort of like, please don't go, please stay here forever, after she grabs onto his arm. But in the Japanese version, she's quite young and she's sick. So all she says is, oh, honey-chan, which is sort of like big brother. Yeah. Um, although it occurs to me that Ty wouldn't be himself being dragged up because he doesn't belong in the digital world. But the Digivice is, right? Yeah. So he is single-handedly holding on to this floating, like, one object. He's, his hand's really strong. Yeah, like... It's, it, it is helping him get to the, digi- it's back really, to the digital world. It's really impressive that he can hold on to it. Um, and yeah, and so she holds on. And I was really expecting, because it's been confirmed, I mean, earlier by you, but also, like, the show confirms it right after this, but we know that Kari eventually gets to the digital world. And I honestly, I thought this was the moment where she just holds on and just floats up with him. <laughs> I, I, would, I would like that. Like, that would be pretty cool, you know. We... But then we'd also have another sort of TK experience where all that Ty does is try to protect TK and that becomes his character, uh, tries to protect Kari and that becomes his character. Is that not what happens anyway? I'm not going to say anything. Okay, well, I shouldn't have asked, I guess. Yeah, so that's pretty much the end of the episode. We have a bit of discussion between Agumon and Ty saying that they have to go back and save their friends because they know something's not right. Uh, yeah, and so they're just standing in the desert, about to trudge through the desert, as they've never done before. So, what did you think of this episode as someone who was new to Digimon? Uh, this is really up there with what, with some of the best episodes, because I just, it was, it's, it's something really enjoyable. I've said it before, but I really like how wacky um, the show can get, 
and I don't think that that wa- that wackiness is best when um uh that wackiness is best when you're showing the difference between okay let's put it this way I find it way more interesting to have a, a Digimon in the real world having reactions to what everything that's going on than I do the kids in the digital world just kind of being confused because like a Koromon's sense of wonder about the about the real world and like trying like cola and that sort of stuff and interacting with modern society is hilarious. Uh, I really I appreciate that. Um, also, this episode went into a lot of like mystery of like how long have they been gone? Have they been gone for an hour? Um, we know the kids did go to camp, so how did Ty teleport here? Uh, how did he get out of the digital world? Do is do they need to find more Edamons and then strap them to dark networks to be able to all get home? <laughs> and then defeat them. And just it, it raises a lot of actually interesting questions, as opposed to a lot of the other episodes, which are just questions that are just sad. Yeah. So Jeff from Podigis on the with the Will forum said that like that he thinks that he has that he had a dream where you watched this and you were unimpressed. Uh, I think it is very interesting that people are having dreams about me and especially that uh they would have negative impressions from me in those dreams but uh that's fine (laughs) it's actually quite entertaining i like that but uh no i was i was not unimpressed by this episode i am concerned going forward because We've had this infusion of interesting thing happening. In fact, in the last two episodes, both of them have been really against the grain of how we've been going for the previous 19. Yeah. And it it really weirds me out because I'm sure we're going to to run right back into the formula. Because if it had been like this the whole time, right? If it had just been every episode has continuity, every episode has like a thing that's interesting and a struggle and a clear goal and all this stuff, I think the show, like at least the beginning of it would be a lot better because right now seeing this and then comparing to everything else I've seen is just, it's so disappointing about what could have been. Yeah. Like I thought these two episodes were probably like, the best we've seen, like as yeah. we said earlier in the episode. I, I think like the Sora one was fine in hindsight, but it was only fine in comparison to how mediocre everything around it was. At least that's you know that's that's my stance on it anyway. Like, your uh, your mileage may vary. So, what change did you notice, and do you think they were necessary? Okay, a poop jokes really toned down, always appreciated. Um, B, why is Kari no longer sick? It's completely unnecessary to change it. It doesn't change the character in any way. Uh, she now claims to have gone to the digital world. That's a bit odd. I think it was just in passing, though. And then she waves it off, saying that he'd gone there. Uh, I guess that implies she goes there secretly, somehow. I think she has all the answers. Um, and she's just not telling us. <laughs> because that would solve everything. Um, I also noticed that the way she asks for them to stay forever is a lot more pleading in the Japanese version. Like, not necessarily, like, in a bad way, more of a... She's lonely. She's seven or eight years old, and her parents have left for the day. Um, This is before the time where, you know, everyone had the internet and everyone had video games, so Mm. she's got nothing to do. Well, she has the internet. We know that. She had the internet when she was three. Yeah, no, but that that, that was the dad's study, and she might not be able to use it herself. When she might not have the password, she might not be able to go on. It's okay. The password is the there. password is vodka. Her, the pa- yeah, the password is sake. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I so I think she's bored. She's lonely. Like she's sick. Like she doesn't have anyone to look after her. So she's a lot more like, oh, you can stay here forever. Please stay here forever. Um, I but, think it might, yeah. that might also be that. Uh, that, that could have been intended in English because her performance as a voice actor was a little bit wooden, which I can't even blame her because if you look at the animation, she's just staring dead-eyed to the distance. I'm like, well, that's the only voice you can really give that character. So, like, yeah. I th- yeah, she's definitely, like, the re- like the, in, the Jap- in the Japanese version, there's, like, the reason for her being sort of, like, out of it is because she's she's sick. Like, you know, you don't seem normal when you're sick. But in the English version, it seems more like she's this weird, very mature... Like, she's basically an old woman. Like, 
maturity wise in the in the English version. Like besides you know a few dumb lines. But yeah, she's like she she's not really acting like she's seven or eight. And they haven't really mentioned that she's super sick. Well, in English, they they specifically say that she's not. Yeah. Like she says, "I'm not sick." I don't know why. Like I don't know why she feels like she has to say that, especially considering that she is. Yeah. But that's how that goes. So, what episode do you think was better? Uh, probably the second one. Probably <clears throat> it's "Welcome Home" is what it's called. Home away from home in the home English, called home. an English version, or "Corum on the Clash in Tokyo," I think. Yeah, and that's it's it's a lot better, and I just. You know, I, there's, there's, there's just a really simple pleasure about like a Coromon in the city trying to figure it out. And that's it's fun. Yeah. Like I think I think I preferred um the Metal Greymon episode more. Really? Like I mean I I liked them both, don't get me wrong, and these were the best episodes, but like I was like I I expected to like Home Away from Home because what I remember of it is it's fanta- it's a good episode. It's it's like got the the animations amazing, the just it's just so amazing. We get to see him relax for about five minutes, just watching TV, doing what he would do at home. Um, you know, we get, like, what his home life is. We get to see more of, you know, his home than we saw in the the prequel. The Metal Greymon episode, like, kind of surprised me because, honestly, I remember it being, like, I thought it, he evolved in the same episode as Sora Gets Kidnapped. So I just forgot those were two episodes, but I actually really enjoyed it. The characters were working together. They were having a, pl- a plan. So I think I enjoyed the Metal Greymon episode just a little bit more just because it surprised me more yeah. of me enjoying it. But Home Away From Home, like, I knew it was a good episode. Everyone says it's a good episode. I remember really liking it as an episode, so I already I, expected to like that one. I think I have, I have – well, I guess we'll talk about it anyway, but I don't like uh, – you know, I'll get there when we talk about designs. But, yeah, I think a lot more was going on in, um, in the one where they got the real world. And honestly – the more you can distance yourself from fighting Monkey Man more, I'm like, that's fine. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm totally over Edamon. I'm so sick of him already. So the Digimon that were introduced in this episode were basically Metal Greymon and Hikari. <laughs> what a Digimon, right? Well, I guess she wasn't. She was introduced in the English version, but we already sort of knew her in the Japanese version. So uh, you've already said what you feel about Metal Greymon. You think he's just Greymon with metal. Which is, you know, guess what? <laughs> He's called Metal Greymon. Like it. This is the, this is the absolute. Th- this is the first time I think it happens. But um, as far as I'm aware, this is not the last time. Uh, and it's it's where the Digimon evolving is just strapping metal and guns to them. Where that where that comes from. And this is the the epitome of that. Where look, you've got a dinosaur. Now we've made the dinosaur have metal parts. He's better now. <laughs> Well, he's got Katy Perry missiles, so... Yeah, he does. Which are also sort of catfish, he's as got, we've seen previously. He's got his fish missiles for no reason at all. And so, that's, that's just how that goes. And Hikari is Hikari. We've already seen her. Yeah. She's basically... A, a, she's sort of cute. Yes, sort of, it's fine. I don't really like her in the English version because... Why does she as still I said, have a whistle? It's a thing. Yeah, it doesn't need to be. So, did you prefer the episodes in English or Japanese? Oh, def- definitely Japanese. I just it's easier to take seriously, and I, you know what? I don't. I I can't. Maybe maybe the voice acting in Japanese is terrible, but I can't tell. So it doesn't have the opportunity to remove me from the story. As a result, like if the voice acting is really really garbage in Japanese, I still can't tell. Whereas in English, yeah, you feel when something is meant to have energy to it and it doesn't. Oh no, look out. Or. Use the power! Yeah, exactly. Or when somebody's just. When they, people are just phoning it in. And which, whoever was voice directing the show failed. They did not do a good job. Yeah, I, I think these episodes were better in Japanese. Like, I mean, Home Away from Home had so many digi this and digi that, which is fine. Like, it's not. It, normally it's fine, but this was, they just put it in a lot, and Digiworld just annoys me a little bit. Like, I don't know why they can't just say Digital World, <laughs> because that's, it's the digital world, but they just say Digiworld, and they say Digigirl, and Digi this and Digi that, and it's like, I mean, normally it's fine, but this just had a lot of Digi. It had far too much Digi for one episode. All right, everybody, join us next time on Durarara with episode 23 no episode 22, 22. 
Uh, forget about it. <laughs> or the whispering small devil, Pico Devimon. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's forget about it. <laughs> uh, and then uh, where Gururumon's diner. Or oh friend, where Gururumon. That sounds so, really bad. <laughs> so I forgot to say this earlier, but if you want to contact us, as always, lostintranslationmon at gmail dot com. We're lost in translation on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook. We have a thread on with the will, and you can find us on SoundCloud. You can send us a message there. All right. So thanks for listening. Listen in for next week. And hopefully Jay will enjoy those episodes as much as these episodes. Do ra ra ra. Do ra 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 